Well, I've been waiting all day for the sun to come out. It was mighty cold this morning. But it's time to take these leaks out. And most of them have got that hard core that makes them fairly unusable. But I'm going to salvage what I can from all these remaining leaks and see if I can make some late season cheesy leaks. So we'll see. But they're not looking great. What I do want to do, of course, is get this bed ready for the coming season. So it's a good time to make sure that it's clear and then I can drag any remaining compost across and it'll be ready. Right, I'll carry on and get these out and then clean them up and see what we've got. Well, the truth of the matter is that leaks don't last through until March. And I've got two there that have got something on them that's usable. Everything else is going in the compost heap. And well, I can't really expect more. They've been brilliant this year. And we've had many, many meals out of that one row. So, onward. I got the heart pumping and the heat rising. Right, I found another treasure in here. Looks like an iron post. Oh, look at that. Now that could come in handy somewhere. So it's just amazing how this sort of angle iron survives in the soil pretty much forever. It's clearly starts to rust but it's got a long life right time for a breather do something else well i was clearing out the polytunnel the other day i had good reason to come around here and i noticed that the weeds were getting a bit out of hand i have to do this job every year it's only wood chip on top of membrane here you can see in one year that's the sort of growth i get so i'm going to pull it all out and also <laughs> chop away one or two of these brambles well actually this is a rose <sighs> just to give you some sort of idea that's the distance that it's run and this stuff is pretty lethal when it comes to tearing the polytunnel so I'm carefully going to get that removed and there's another one here and then clip back on this tree or bush for the same reason and this is the best way to prolong your life of your polytunnel once it's got a fairly big rip in it, it can be quite tough to recover. So I'm going to get on and pull as many tufts out of here as I can and get myself a little bit straight. I can always come back and finish off at a later date. Now that's looking significantly better and gives me a chance. At some point I'm going to need some more bark, I think. But it really is difficult to get hold of. There's certainly no tree surgeons in my area that are willing to part with any. And the council won't deliver any. So it is quite tough unless you're going to buy them. And I'm not going to do that right at the moment. Okay, so oh, I've got to do that next. Let's get cracking. I'm happy with that. That's kept all the weeds at bay for quite a while longer now. And I just need to get some of that bark, as I say, and I'll be able to topple that off and keep it under control for that much longer. Right, 
What's next on my agenda? Yeah. I've been meaning to do this for a few days now. I got this wood from some roofers that were working in one of the houses in the neighborhood and they just dumped it outside. So my plan is to take all the nails out of it and use it for making a cage for the gooseberries. So it's worth recovering anything like this because wood is so expensive at the moment and I'm going to use a couple of these nails just to repair one of the slatted shells that I've got as well. So unfortunately, there's quite a lot of nails in here. It's going to take me a little while, but I'll bring you back after a time lapse. Well, there's something very satisfying about recycling. And there I've got 17 slats, which hopefully will help me with that gooseberry cage and some of the nails I can save. And I've repaired this slatted bench, or at least I'll use this as a stand when I'm in the polytunnel so that I can put it on the soil by the bench and I don't compress the soil too much. There we go. I was having a little look at this plum tree the other day and I fancy it had a bit of a lean on it and it certainly has and I think what's happened is I've got a bit of a molehill behind it and I think what's happened is it's weakened the soil that the roots are in and with all that wind we've had it's just blown it over a bit so I'm going to pull this back and secure it and I'm going to use a scaffold pole that I've not found useful for a while, thump it into the ground and then bring it over on an angle and then using something to protect the bark I'm going to tie it once it's been pulled back. I'll hopefully give it some support for the roots to get established once again. So first things first I think I'm going to thump this into the ground. Now I want to get it so that I can tie it probably about there. So I need to thump it in here. Right, let's see if I can do this without damaging any of the branches. Right got myself a secure pipe now coming out so I just need to pull this back and fix it I think what I'm gonna to have to do is pull it back and wedge it in place whilst I secure it so there's always something on the plot for the purpose right let's get that one out Okay, let's see if we can secure that. Right, what I'm going to do is wrap this bit of, well, I think it's old dressing gown actually, around here, because I just don't want it to rub continually against the bark of the tree. And then I'm going to start to bind that. Okay, well this is a bit of a moment of truth whether I take that away or not actually I think I'm gonna leave it for a while and just allow this whole thing to settle 
and become a bit more stable. Hopefully the roots will do their job. And while I was up here I noticed that this patch of stinging nettles is really getting going again. And the chickens just don't eat stinging nettles. They eat pretty much everything else, but not these. So once they can, and the soil's quite soft, I'm just going to get rid of these and get them out of the ground. I'm sure they'll come back up because they seem to be so prolific in this area. But my trusty Chillington hoe will make mincemeat of them today. And you can see them growing all along the edges there. I'll just try and do them a bit of damage. Right, hopefully that will keep them at bay. Well, you might be wondering why I've not rushed into sowing. And well, that's because I've still got to get the algae off of the inside of this polytunnel. And I had to order some more Algon, which is the preferred method of removing the algae. It's, well, organic and cruelty free. So it's a good product and it really gets rid of the algae. So I'm going to spray that as soon as it arrives, any day now. So in the meantime, I don't really want to be sowing an awful lot of plant life when I'm spraying that around. So that's what's delaying me. And I thought to myself, is there anything I need to do urgently in the way of sowing? And there is one thing and that is sweet peas. And I've had these sweet peas in the shed now for, well, the whole of the winter because they were taken from my own plants, saved seed. So I am going to sow a few of those and I've got myself a tray ready. And then what I'm gonna do is, what, there's 12 sections in there, three, six, nine, 12, 15 sections in there. So I'm just gonna spread these amongst the 15 sections and give them an early start. I think probably a late start, but they'll be okay. They'll come through. And I know a lot of people are starting to sow and I'm seeing it on YouTube all the time now. And it makes perfect sense depending on where you are in the country. And I was looking at my thermometer this morning and last night went down to minus 2.5 and as high as 18 degrees in here, but 2.5 is pretty darn low. So it's just a bit early for me in this area. And we are a thousand feet above sea level. So as you can imagine, that has a bearing on the temperature. I know when I travel down towards the south of the country, it immediately drops by three degrees on my way. So it makes perfect sense for people to start the sowing, but I'll be holding off for just another week or two before I get cracking on it. In the meantime, I'm going to sow these sweet peas. Well, I can't tell you how good it is to be working in the tunnel. It's warm and the sowing is sort of underway. One of the jobs that I'm going to finish off with today is just cleaning these propagators after I'd sprayed them down with the hose it was apparent that some of them were still a little bit cloudy on the surface and there's one thing that you do need when you're growing seeds is plenty of light and just cleaning these off will just help that process and pay dividends I've got to be careful I don't hook myself with that and bump my head too often right well that leaves it for today and I'll just wish you good gardening and hope that you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, then why not like and subscribe? And if you want my updates, you know the score every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Good times.